What is going on, people? Tonight, we've got to talk about Spurs as they have done it again. Somehow, some way, they've beaten Manchester City again at home. Manchester City seem incapable of getting points away from home at Spurs. I think Spurs are officially a Manchester City bogey team. What a magnificent performance. Emerson Royal was brilliant. I can't believe I'm saying this. But he's one of those players that is like Marmite. You either love him or you don't. And most people don't really like Marmite in their sandwich. And so Emerson Royale isn't exactly everybody's cup of tea. But you know what? Credit where credit is due. Tonight he was mwah, chef's kiss. Absolutely magnificent. He showed fight. He showed passion, but more importantly, he showed clutch factor in the key moments where it looked like Manchester City were going to conjure up a, 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 a pot potential comeback, where it looked like Manchester City were going to edge their way back into the game. It looked like Jack Grealish was cooking up something on the left-hand side, but Emerson Royale shut it down, and he made sure that there was an absolute cement wall between the box and and Jack Grealish, and that Jack Grealish could not penetrate effectively enough to create chances for Erling Haaland, for Julian Alvarez, and subsequently for other Manchester City players. He was pivotal in Spurs getting a result tonight. I think another man who was pivotal is, is Harry Kane. I think he officially now is Spurs' greatest ever striker, and possibly Spurs' greatest ever player, but I'm not a Tottenham fan, so I don't actually know if that's accurate. I, but I would say so. As a rival, he now has to be Tottenham Hotspur's greatest ever player. He has now smashed the goal-scoring record, the all-time goal-scoring record for Tottenham Hotspurs. And there is no doubt that if he avoids a career-threatening injury, he will go on to smash the Premier League all-time scoring record. I'm, I have no doubt in my mind that Harry Kane will achieve that milestone because he is greatness personified for Tottenham Hotspurs. For the rest of the footballing world, it's up for a debate because of his trophy cabinet. But that's a conversation for another day. Respect to Sir Harold Kane. What a performance, honestly. It wasn't a pretty performance. Spurs didn't dominate the game. Spurs didn't play fluid, fast attacking football. In fact, for most of the game, Spurs were kind of sitting back and trying to hit Manchester City on the break, which is what you would expect for a team that is struggling, a team that is going through a, a massive period of uncertainty where they, where they don't know whether or not the manager is going to stay beyond the summer. Lots of reports suggesting that Antonio Conte's time at Tottenham is up at the end of the season. That coupled with bad performances as well as bad results on the field, everything that's going wrong at Tottenham this season, it just seems like a bad time to be a Spurs fan. But results like tonight can give you hope. Results like tonight show the light at the end of the tunnel. And for Manchester City, well, well, well. I don't know where to start because I tell you what, they have fallen off a cliff and Manchester City fans might not like to hear that. They might get very offended by that. But in actuality, it's a compliment. When people are saying you've fallen off, but you're still second in the league, that's a compliment. That shows how much people expect of you. People expect Manchester City to be the best team in the league 24-7 all the time. Manchester City are the measuring stick of excellence. They are the pinnacle of brilliance at least in recent times, in competitive Premier League football. So to say that Manchester City have fallen off is not an insult. It's actually a bit of praise. It's saying that this team that is so amazing, that has set their standards so high, are now a victim of their own success because suddenly being five points behind the league leaders means that they might potentially end the season in failure. And that, my friends, is what comes with success. So Manchester City fans, get used to it. Every time you don't win the league, it's, it's going to come your way. And, and Pep Guardiola has got to bear the brunt of the criticism because his decisions in terms of who he has started in this game, I, I'm not a Manchester City fan, so I'm not going to profess to know what his rotation methods are like and whether or not they've been successful this season. But I think on the main, we can all agree that Pep Guardiola has made some strange decisions. Not stand, starting um, Ikai Gundogan, as an example, was very, very strange in my humble opinion. You're playing Spurs away from home where you're going to dominate the game. You're going to have lots of possession. I think you play Ikai Gundogan. I think you need his intelligence and what he brings to the midfield. Equally, I think you need Kevin De Bruyne. I think you needed the creativity of Kevin De Bruyne today, especially seeing as Erling Haaland wasn't able to get into the game because nobody was really giving him the service that he needs. I've watched a few Man City games this season. I haven't watched a lot of Man City games this season, but from the few games I've watched, one thing I've sort of deduced and the conclusion I've drawn from my analysis is that 
When Kevin De Bruyne is on the field, I think he's one of the few players who actually is able to link up with Haaland quite effectively. The rest of the Manchester City team don't quite seem on the same wavelength yet. And, and it's a tricky situation because football fans are so binary in their thinking. They're so narrow-minded where they can't seem to compartmentalize or, or, or rationalize this idea that just because somebody's scoring a lot of goals, it does not mean that they are having an overall positive contribution to the team. Because sometimes when a player scores a lot of goals, they're taking away from what the other players could be doing in that team. Because now they're a funnel of everything that's going, going on in the attack for that team. And I know to some people that just doesn't make sense, but the simplest way to describe it is look at how after a certain number seven left Manchester United, Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford are scoring at a higher rate now. Look at how a, since a certain number seven left Real Madrid, Benzema went on to win a Ballon d'Or and became one of the better players in that Real Madrid team and everything started to open up. When you play through one player and one player is the source of goals and one player is the source of, of any match-winning scenario, it diminishes the ability to be dynamic, to be unpredictable, to use all the resources you have to your disposal. And I just feel like Erling Haaland, for all the goals he has scored and the brilliance he's brought to this Man Manchester City side, it's kind of stunted the rest of the, the team. I'm not going to lie. Now, that isn't Erling Haaland's fault. That could be down to a lack of motivation. That could be down to a lack of passion. That could be down to the fact that Manchester City are human. They're not robots. And winning a three-peat is one of the hardest things to do in the Premier League. That could be what it's down to. But I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. I think that we will just have to see what happens with Erling Haaland. Maybe next, next season, Manchester City win the league and Erling Haaland is their top goal scorer and Erling Haaland is at the epicenter of everything good for Manchester City. Maybe that will be the case. But until that point comes, we don't know. We're all just speculating. And for me, based on the evidence so far, it just seems like Erling Haaland... It just, it just doesn't fit the way Manchester City play. Or at least Manchester City don't fit the way Erling Haaland play. I don't know which way around is the correct way of phrasing it. But yeah, man, difficult situation for Manchester City. They have now dropped points to Spurs and essentially forfeited their game in hand to Arsenal. And uh, you, you wonder where, where is the next step for Manchester City? Because I've heard a few people say that they could potentially go for the Champions League this season and that they don't really have to worry about the Premier League. Like if Arsenal win the Premier League, it's not the worst possible thing in the world because maybe Manchester City now can actually focus on the Champions League. And you know what? That's not a bad shout. Maybe Manchester City can finally win a Champions League if they actually forfeit the Premier League. I don't know, though. Is that the right mindset to have if you're a Manchester City fan? Is that lowering the standards? You be the judge in the comments down below. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace.